you've been watching Formula 1 recently, you may have not noticed one thing. The safety car. Ah, oh, the safety car, beloved bringer of race strategy curveballs. But wait, where's it gone? And how am I still floating up here? Ah! Leading into this long break between Singapore and the US Grand Prix, we have now had nine races in a row without the physical burnt Mylander piloted safety car being called out during a race. We have had two races with the virtual safety car in that time, but that's not real. That's just some lights on the steering wheel that tells everyone to slow down a bit. No bunching up, no perilous restarts. Ew, no, not the same thing at all. Nowadays, we're used to seeing the safety car in well over 50% of the races in a year. So it is a little strange that this year that number is down at 22%. The last time we had a season with the number that low was 2004. So what's going on here? Is this just luck effectively or bad luck, depending on your perspective? Is this part of a wider trend in crashiness, which started well before this year? Or is the sport actually changing in some way? What could that mean for racing in the future? Let's find out. Just before we find out though, I need to tell you that we have just hit 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And to commemorate this milestone, I have released this limited edition bucket hat onto mrvsgarage.com. Is it gonna get lost into the green screen? I don't know. If you fancy one, head to the link in the description. There are only 50, so get them while you can. Okay, cool. Back to the safety car thing. Now I could just stand here and tell you that our nine race, no safety car streak is all some statistical inevitability. Flip a coin enough times and eventually you will get tails nine times in a row, that sort of thing. In a way, a safety car is kind of like flipping a coin. You either get one or you don't. Obviously, a little more complex than that with different tracks having a different historical safety car record. Bahrain has a 60% chance. Some tracks like Catalonia and the Red Bull Ring sit about an even 50. Singapore used to have a 100% record and even with no safety car this year still sits at 93%. But even with these high chances of a safety car, theoretically, it is possible that we just fall on the no safety car side of the odds for every track in a given year. So is it just that? Just random chance? Well, thankfully for my ad revenue, no. While there is an element of randomness in each race that can lead to the safety car and other incidents, the season is not just 24 independent events happening one after the other. They are connected. As the season progresses, the chance of a crash or mechanical failure or human failure changes. For instance, in the first race of a season, drivers are rusty from the winter, cars can have new technical components which might just not work, and the sport may have some new drivers who are, let's just say, inexperienced. Later in the season, teams may be running low on components, and so their engine might just be a big box full of rust and duct tape, ready to implode like Oppenheimer could only ever dream of. If it does, good chance you're going spinning off into a wall, and then safety car. There's also other stuff that changes the likelihood of a safety car throughout the year. Weather, as this is a year-round sport, driver mental state due to contract pressure or whatever, improper track preparation, tyre reliability, Flavio Briatore, the list goes on. So no, while some seasons will have a few more and some will have a few less, I wouldn't expect the average number of safety cars in a year to drastically change without some other factors at play. But what could they be? Maybe this lack of recent safety cars is just an evolution of a long-term trend in safety car deployment that no one has noticed until now. Hmm, seems like the only way to confirm this would be to track every safety car since its permanent introduction into Formula 1 in 1993. But who would possibly be sad and bored enough to do that? So I tracked every safety car deployment since 1993, plotted it as a percentage of races in the season, and I think we can conclusively say... Yeah, nah, it's going up. Even if we remove virtual safety cars, which were introduced in 2015, there's definitely more recently than ever before. But actually, wait, zoom, enhance, is that a decline? Hmm, it might be too early to tell, but it definitely feels like something could have happened around 2022 or 23 to kick off this recent downturn. What could that possibly be? So no, this recent decline definitely isn't a long-term trend since the 1990s. Back then we had even less safety cars than we have now, including only one in 1995. But it could be a new long-term trend which has only recently started, and so we need to look at what might have caused that. Looking at the 2022 and 23 seasons, we find two obvious suspects for this, ground effect cars and the cost cap. 
both of these things were introduced to make the sport more competitive and more exciting. But have they inadvertently rid the sport of one of the most exciting things that can happen during a race? Let's take the cost cap first. Because every crash represents a big check that needs to be signed to cover repairs, and because cash is more limited than it's ever been, it's not too much of a stretch to see how giving teams a spending limit may have caused them to be less risky, with both their driver selection but also what they ask their drivers to do. This has potentially led teams to make driver lineup decisions based less on potential performance and more based on reliability and experience. It also means that teams may be changing what they ask their drivers to do during a race. Whereas before, a midfield team may have told their driver to push like crazy and try and claw their way up into the points. Nowadays, the increased risk of a spin that comes with that push could be outweighing the potential reward. And so it might make more sense to just hang around and pee. 12, let's say, and hope you gain places in the constructor standings due to best finish. Teams cannot afford to crash anymore, or even drive too aggressively over curbs or push the engine sometimes, because every damaged or worn out part needs to be replaced so you can go racing next weekend. And all the cash spent on replacing parts is cash you don't spend on development and moving up the standings in the future. The 2022 F1 season also brought us the new ground effect cars in an attempt to tackle the dirty air problem and make racing closer. Not going to go into whether that worked or not in this video. Spoiler, it didn't. But could these weird curvy wings somehow be causing cars to crash less? Well, the wings, not so much. But if we look under the car, we might find the culprit we've been looking for. These cars now get a huge proportion of their aerodynamic performance, and therefore speed, from their underbody airflow. To get good underfloor aero performance, you need to prioritize two things, running low and, crucially, staying low. When a car brakes, or accelerates, or turns, or goes over a curb, it tilts. For ground effect cars, this is a big no-no. The optimal way to drive these cars is to keep them as level as possible, which means earlier, smoother braking and less aggressive steering inputs. Fernando Alonso even said in an interview recently that with the cars we have now, if you drive at 90%, sometimes you are faster. And obviously, if a driver is giving it 90% rather than pushing with all of their ability, they're less likely to crash. You don't crash when you're cruising down the motorway, you crash when you're being an idiot and trying to prove that yes, your VW Polo can take this roundabout at 65. Now that we've had these cars for almost three full seasons, the teams will have figured this out and will no doubt be coaching their drivers to operate the cars in this smoother, less crash-prone way. Good for them, I guess, but uh... I kind of like the crashing guys. Not like the big ones where people get hurt, but an innocent little spin across some gravel or an oh, I am stupid. stupid moment. Well, these are part of the chaos that make fans fall in love with motorsport. And we may have just regulated them out of Formula One. It's kind of sad. To those of you wondering if we will ever see the safety car again, yes, people do still crash, just less. We had a pretty major crash in our second last race, but because it was two laps before the end, we got a virtual safety car instead of a full one. If this was earlier on in the race, I'm sure Burnt Mylander would have showed up. The safety car is not going away. I don't think we'll ever get back down to 1995 levels of usage, but I do think this recent decline could be here to stay. At least for next year. 2026 brings a whole new suite of technical regulations which, crucially, are not set in stone. Hopefully, some changes are made to these regulations to design cars which, among other things, rely on peak driver skill once more, so we can see drivers giving it 100% out on track. It's better for racing, but along with this peak performance, we might also see a few risks not paying off, and a few more cars spinning across the gravel to make sure Burnt Mylander doesn't get to retire just yet. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button down below. And you know what? If you're feeling fancy, why not support the channel over on Patreon? You get early access to videos such as this one, a discount on the merch store, that warm, fuzzy feeling that comes from supporting the channel, and at higher tiers, you even get signed photography and artworks by this idiot.